Ever tell Natalie I said hello. She's a good friend of ours here at 11 Alive, always takes care of us when situations <laughs> like this pop up. Crash Clark said good morning. Good morning, Crash. <laughs> uh, just talk about, we, we've been here all morning since about 5 o'clock, and the workers here have been doing this stuff all night, look, keeping an eye on the roads. Talk about how you guys are preparing for this stuff to come in. So we started last night in the metro area. At 7 p.m., we rolled out those brine trucks. They've treated... Uh, hundreds of lane miles in the metro area. They've dropped over 150,000 gallons of brine on the roadway. Um, so that's really what we're doing right now as far as a pre-treatment option is getting a really thick layer of brine down. We'll be running those brine tankers throughout the day. Um, and again, we're just sort of in a pattern right now where we're watching the system come in, seeing what it brings us. We've, we've a, we're in a benefit because we've got that brine down on the road. Um, and so it will. what we will be looking at and what we'll be dealing with really is how much that sunshine, that wind, that drying period we get before we reach freezing, how much of that Hello? we get. So whatever moisture is left on the roads when we get to 32 degrees tonight, it's going to freeze. So there will be some icy patches. Now, whether it's a widespread event or whether the wind, the sun, and the brine all play in our favor and we sort of diminish the results of what this brings to our roads, that's what we're hoping for. But we'll be working through this system until it's well past us to make sure that our roads are safe for travel. And you talk about that dry period. That's that crucial hour, right? Yeah. So what we're looking at right now is still this to come in as some rain, transition over to a wintry mix, some snow, whatever that is. Um, and then at this point, it, it seems like we'll get a break. We'll get high winds. We'll get some sun, hopefully, depending on how long that period is without moisture, without precipitation, and how much wind and sun we get. That's going to really play into our hand as far as how much drying we get on the road. So that's what we need is that drying on the road. If we don't get drying on the road, we're going to have more icy conditions. So right now, our plan is to treat it. Worst case scenario is if we're not going to get any drying, um, but, but as this weather system has sort of evolved, we've seen that window grow. Temperatures stay a little bit warmer. So, of course, people are at home today. That's great. If your school called out or your state employee and you're at home, that's great. We still need you to stay off the roads, even though you may look outside and you're like, this isn't as cold <laughs> as we thought it would be and it's not wet yet. We're still working on the roads and we still don't know exactly what we're going to get. So best to stay off the roads, let our crews do the hard work. Lesson learned. That's what I've been hearing the past couple of days. A lot of people reflecting back to five years ago. Uh, we didn't have our Super Bowl here in Atlanta five years ago. Uh, but talk about the lessons learned from five years ago. Well, we, we learned so much, and you can see how each lesson we learned has kind of been that we've checked that box as we were approaching this storm. Five years ago, before Snowmageddon, um, we didn't have a pretreatment program. We didn't have a gallon of brine in the state. Now we have almost a million gallons of brine statewide. So that brine program has grown. It's substantial. We put it to use when we need it. Uh, and we, we really, we, we use the brine here in Georgia now. So we started brining last night. Um, the night before Snowmageddon last time, no schools were canceled. No work was canceled. Everyone was at school and at work, and they all left at the same time. So you see, we checked that box. Schools are out. State government's canceled. That takes more people off the road. So we've got the brine, which we didn't have. More people are off the road, which we didn't have. We have a high level of technology. Road weather information sensors show us where the roads are freezing, where we need more manpower, where we need more materials, how the storm system comes across our state. Is it rain? Is it ice? Um, like right now, the subsurface temperatures in the downtown, sort of downtown connector area, are almost at 50 degrees. They're well above freezing. So we know we're not going to have any ice there right now. So we have so much more information and such a better plan than we had five years ago. We're, we're in a totally different place than we were five years ago. Night and day. Uh, Night and day. Uh, Moving forward, overnight, a, a lot of people will, uh, obviously, we're, we're anticipating the precip uh, the snow, I'm All sorry, uh, precipitation, if I can get it out, <laughs> the, 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 yeah, the, precip the, pre the precip, overnight, uh, people are, are looking at overnight, what will be the work going from this evening to overnight? So... Again, we're going to have those brine trucks out all day. We're going to get some of that harder material down. Um, we don't use, typically use that until we know what we're getting. Um, but we're, again, we're proceeding with abundance of caution, obviously, because we still don't know exactly what we're going to get. In addition to, we have one 
2 million extra extra visitors coming to our town this week. So of course there is a heightened sense of what are our materials, where can we use them? We're going to drop some of that harder material, that rock and that, that small stone and that salt on bridges and overpasses. Those areas typically set up ice, hold that ice longer and get it earlier. So we're going to get some of those harder materials down on those bridges and overpasses in the metro area. Certainly our counties to the north. So uh, up 75 and out through Gainesville, they're going to get sort of the brunt of this. So they have been working since yesterday morning, getting that brine out, getting harder materials out. So we're, we're taking everything we have as far as materials and manpower, and we're putting it to use. We'll work throughout the day. Again, evaluate tonight to see what the trouble spots are, where, you know, whatever the storm brings us, how we need to address that. But we have all, all systems go, really. We've activated our statewide plan. That means we brought up extra staff from our, our southern counties that aren't going to be affected. So they're in town. We have we had to plan months and months ago for an event like this so that we had hotel rooms for our staff that have to come in from South Georgia to supplement our crews. So when you think about it, people are saying there's no hotel rooms in this city. We had to look into the future three, four, five months ago and say, what if there are no there, what if there are no accommodations for our staff and we have a winter weather event? Well, luckily, we planned. We prepared. And so we've got extra staff in. They're ready to go. We are fully staffed. We are using all of our materials. So whatever this brings, we're more than equipped to deal with it. And GDOT is prepared. They say they've been prepared for a long time. And I'm just going to send it back to you, Sheba. All right, Nick. Yeah, that's comforting to know that they started arranging for those crews to get here several months in advance, knowing that something might happen this week weather wise. Be sure to download the 11 Alive news app. We are pushing weather alerts straight to your phone and you can find it for free in your app store. We're going to move from the roads to air travel. But first, Liza Lucas, I know there's been a run on more than just bread and milk. No, no. this time it's gotten a little interesting. Not the normal hashtag French toast situation, but it looks like according to Tommy's picture, get a little closer here. You can see the pizza and the chicken pot pies are flying off the shelf in Marietta. So people don't seem to be worried about power outages so much as staying full and comfortable as we kind of expect this cold to move through. So a fun one right there. Keep us posted on what you're seeing out there. Help us be your eyes and ears. You can use that hashtag Morning Rush ATL. In the meantime, there's warming centers that are open. The city of Atlanta has opened their warming center starting at 6 a.m. this morning. Thursday morning as well, and then DeKalb also. So we have tweeted that information out. A lot of reminders coming in from police departments to bring those pets inside, watch your plants, check on the elderly and your neighbors, watch out for one another as we continue to monitor. And then meanwhile, of course, we are monitoring this situation because this is our flight aware map. And it looks like we have hit that 1,000 cancellations today, so it just keeps going up, and this is something we're staying on top of. Here at the 11 Alive Bridge, we know that Delta proactively had cancellations, and sure enough, the biggest impacts we're seeing are Chicago Midway and Hartsfield Jackson. That's where those the bulk of those cancellations is coming into play. So this is something that we're going to monitor throughout the day, but the airlines encouraging those who are supposed to fly to check in, watch your social media and look out and see if you're impacted by the travel waivers. In the meantime, I'm going to check in with Jerry, who is on the roads this morning. We are on the road. We are on the east-west connector, and I want to show you the Georgia, or excuse me, the Cobb County Department of Transportation at work. Right ahead of us there, that is one of the brine trucks that belongs to the Cobb County Department of Transportation out spreading that salt and water mixture in an effort to keep snow and ice from adhering to the roadway. Now, he is focusing right now on bridges, on curves, and on shaded areas. Of course, everything's shaded now with all the clouds, but he is about to approach a bridge now where you'll... You might be able to see it in this camera. You'll see the brine start to come out of the bar down there uh, at the bottom of the truck, uh, down there toward his tires. You might be able to, and he's slowing down now because we're about to hit the bridge. And that spray is going to come out and show that salt and water mixture. Uh, Ed is the name of the driver here of this brine truck. There it is. You might be able to see it. Of course, it's mixed in with all the rain. But there he's putting down that salt and water mixture known as brine, heavy salt mixture, that will hopefully 
uh, keep snow and ice from sticking to this particular bridge and bridges and overpasses are always the first to ice over. Uh, Ed, the driver of this truck, tells me that he got into work a little early this morning and they put him right in this truck and sent him out, got out on the road at uh, right about uh, 6 o'clock this morning. So he's been going nearly two hours and he told us just a second ago that he has hit just about every bridge uh, that it belongs to Cobb County. Of course, uh, Georgia DOT also at work throughout the state, but also in Cobb County spreading a brine mixture pre-treating this road, uh, roadways in hopes uh, of keeping them safe. Now, a couple of things that we've got going for is Cobb County was considering not spreading brine because the fear was that heavy rain would wash it all away. They'd spread it and then the rain would come and just wash it away and, and make it a waste of time and material. But what we're getting right now is very light rain, not enough to wash the brine away. And so Cobb decided to go ahead and spread the brine. They've also got, and they, and they should have left to hit the roadway now. We saw them heading out of the, the DOT headquarters just a little bit ago. I think he's finished. He might be finished and heading back here, Ed, in just a minute. Uh, but uh, we saw them heading out with gravel and uh, with salt trucks, and uh, they were going to treat the roadways as well. Okay. Yeah, thank you, Ed. Okay. You're heading back? Yes. Okay, Ed is finished, and you're going to load up again and head out, you think? Uh, yes, we're gonna. I'm going to head over to Jim Miller Park, get some breakfast, get and some, then we're going to reload. Reload and head back out again. Get back out. No rest for the weary these days. Oh, no. All right. All right thank you, <laughs> thank you Ed. Well, that, that's uh, Ed talking to us right there, telling us a little bit about, hey, he's he's got to head back. He's used his whole tank here, and uh, he's going to fill back up again, get a re replenish the salt and uh, water mixture known as brine, and then he'll head right back out again. You, you can't do enough pre-treating, it seems, in a situation like this. Of course, Brian wasn't really used anywhere in Metro Atlanta previous to about uh, three years ago, four years ago, I think, and then we had that big 2014 snowmageddon, and all of a sudden, Brian became very, very popular in pre-treating roadways. So uh, Ed is back out now, going back to, to headquarters to load back up again and uh, head back out. But as I was saying before, uh, there are trucks that are out right now with salt and gravel, and they are also going to pre-treat roadways, uh, concentrating on curves, concentrating on bridges and overpasses. Uh, and shady spots where ice could collect and uh, they will be working 12-hour shifts here in Cobb County. Uh, some of them started at 7 this morning. Ed and the brine truck started around 6, and then they'll go to about 7 o'clock tonight, and then they'll work overnight if necessary to hit spots that could turn into black ice. So very, very busy. The rain is coming down. Uh, we were just seeing light rain periodically throughout the morning, and we've been out since 4 o'clock. Uh, but at about 30 minutes ago, that's when we started to see consistent rain. It is light but we don't have any snow as of yet. Um, and again, what we have going for us is just a short period of rain that won't wash the brine away, and the roadways are very warm. So hopefully the combination of the pre-treating and the warm surfaces will keep ice and snow from sticking to the roadways. But Chesley McNeil, we will be out here watching, and if we see anything start to happen out here that's concerning, we will definitely let you know. And when the first snowflake falls, we'll let you know.